that's hundred. Now, when it comes down to editing, let's say we wanted to chop the section. So let's say we want to get rid of everything over on this side, the second half. All we have to do is first of all, make sure that we have all of our tools engaged. We have our marquee tool, pointer tool, and fade tool all selected, all right? So what we're gonna do is come over here and click Logic Pro, and then we're gonna go to our settings, and then we're gonna come over here to General. Now, so what we're gonna do is come over here to Editing, and I have a few changes in here. So the right mouse button, so it's current state is probably going to be like an open shortcut menu or something like that. So I've changed my right mouse button to is assignable to a tool. And this gives us a third tool option right up here. And we can edit very quickly by having this set up. And once you guys have done that, we are going to turn on our marquee tool by hitting command. Now you see the plus sign comes up. This is our marquee. We're going to take this, start at this measure, and then we're going to drag down just like this. Now, if we want to take out this section, all we have to do is hit delete and it's gone. We can do command Z to bring it back. Now, if we want to copy this, we can do a fast workaround, which is going to be option. And then we're going to click and then we're going to hold option and click and then drag everything over. Boom. And now we have a duplicate of this second bar. Now, let's say we wanted to get everything. Then all we have to do is do command A. And then we can option drag the whole selection over to copy. You see that? Now, another thing we can do is command A, and then we can do command R to repeat this. So let's say we want to get just this much. We only want half of this. So we can highlight half of that. Yeah, go ahead and split it because we split the region, which is MIDI. So go ahead and hit split. Then we're going to do the option and drag over, boom. And then we're going to use our third tool, which is our right mouse click. So if you have a trackpad, then you can use two fingers to click down at the same time and then highlight and drag over these. And what it will do is it'll begin to fade over all of the audio regions. So this will really speed up your workflow. So what we can do is set our locators. Let's say we want to set the locators right here for these four bars. What we can do is do Control, Command, and Z. And now that will insert time for us to be able to add whatever section we want in here, which is really convenient. And if you don't want it, then you can do the reverse, which is Control, Command, X. And now you got that cut time back. Now, let's say we want to delete everything around this. We only want this and we want all the rest of it to go. What we would do is do command A to highlight everything. And then we would come over here to edit this time. Then we're going to come over here to where it says trim. And then you would do the crop outside locators, which is command and backslash. So let's try that now. Command and then that slash, and then boom. Everything in between it is gone. So that's super useful. That's 100. Now, if you're really serious about taking your Logic Pro experience to the next level and beyond, then my Logic Pro Masterclass is gonna be the solution for you because I take all of these concepts, mixing, mastering, sounds, automation, and so much more in time and care into this class to make it easy and digestible for you to understand. Now, I completely understand if you're a beginner and you're trying to figure out logic and trying to figure out how to record i've also included chapters for the ultimate beginner where you know nothing about recording you will still be able to follow along so if you want to enroll in that course i'll leave that tag below for you guys so you can have access to it all right so the next thing we're going to cover is join so let's say we wanted to get both of these guitar loops to be joined as one long 
eight bar loop. What we can do is highlight both of these and then do Command and J. And it will join these regions. Now this works for both MIDI and audio. So we can do something like this where we can say, hey, let's join all of these. We can do Command J and boom, they'll all be joined as one track together. Or we can simply do one at a time, which is this, do Command J and it'll join those together. Now, if we want to do all of these at the same time, but separately, we would just do J and they'll all join that way. Now, for me, I'm a person that loves to nudge. So what I'll do to nudge is we can do option and nudge this over this way to the right or to the left. Now, when it comes down to nudging, what you want to do is set that nudge value so we can do the right click, which is control and click. And then we're going to come over here to where it says move. Great. And then we're going to set nudge value to. Now, what I like to do is set this to ticks. So we can set this over here to tick this way. Boom. And now we can go ahead and do that and get that custom nudge. Now, what I'm going to do is actually set this back. So we're going to do the move. Then we're going to set the nudge value to, to, let's say, 10 ticks. All right, so now that we have that set to 10 ticks, now we can nudge these even more now. So let's do the command and the right arrow. And now we have it set to 10 ticks this way. Or we can set the nudge value to milliseconds. So we can do one millisecond, 10 milliseconds, or sample base. So let's do this to one millisecond. One millisecond is pretty decent. And we can honestly, you can leave it there at one millisecond. You can figure out how you want to edit. Now, in terms of workflow and editing, this is still important just for us to remember. So command arrow up is going to give us the collapse. Command arrow down is going to allow us to see more of the tracks. Same thing with command over to the right arrow. We can zoom in and zoom out this way. If you want to zoom in on a particular track, you can do option and then drag over the region and boom, now you're like mad zoomed in over that region. And then to get out of it, you can just hit Z to get back to the normal space. Hit Z again to go back to where you zoomed in and hit Z again. So this is really handy for editing. Now in terms of editing, we need to cover a big one here and this is bounce in place. So we have different use cases for this. However you want to use this, I just want to unlock your mind first. So let's get into that. So the bounce in place functionality allows us to convert anything from MIDI to audio or from multiple audio tracks to one audio track. So let's say all of these drums here, we want to get all of the drums for whatever reason, you want these on a, a stereo track as an audio file. What you can do is highlight all of these and then you can do control and B and this is going to give us a menu. So we can name this drums. We'll do a new track. We're going to leave the source as is, or you can mute the source files if you want. So let's do that. And then I'm not going to bypass any of the uh, plugins or anything like that. Uh, I am going to include the audio tail and file. And sure, we can uh, include the tail on the region, include volume and pan automation so you can keep your levels of how you customized it. And then we're going to leave the normalize off. Then we're going to hit OK. And what happens is, is it bounces that drum groove into a stereo file. So that's super convenient. Now, if you don't want to do multiple tracks at the same time, you can always just do one track. So we can just highlight over the one track, do control B. We can name this kick do keep all the same options that we had before and boom, we have a kick track that is audio. 
really useful. All right, guys, hope you guys got some value out of this video. If you did, give your brother a thumbs up, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss anything else. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.